Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Guru video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple, very basic video intro within Adobe After Effects. So I'm gonna show you some techniques that I have used to create some intros that I have used in the past. So let's go ahead and dive into. Here is what the final product will look like. Very simple, very easy, but actually very nice looking. The first thing you want to do is go up to composition, new composition. Once you do that, you can go ahead and name that guy. Make sure you have the width at 1920, height at 1080, if that is what you so desire, and then click OK to create that compass or composition there. Sorry. And then once we've done that, we want to create a background layer. So go and right click down here, go to new, go to solid, and then you can name this BG for background. Make sure that it is the same width and height as your composition. And then click OK. It doesn't really matter what color. Again, this is all depending on the kind of intro and logo that you have. So tailor this to you. Don't choose the exact colors and fonts that I do because you are different than me. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now that we have done that, created a background layer, I want to go over to the Effects and Presets tab over here on the right. It may not be on the right of your workspace. If you, however, do not see that, go up to Window, go down to Effects and Presets, and make sure you have that nice little check mark right beside it. Once we're over there, we're going to search for ramp, which is a fancy word for gradient. So double click that. That will add the gradient slash ramp. I want to change that ramp to a radial ramp. So what that is, is a circular ramp going from the center or top or bottom. It looks a little different and a little better for this specific purpose, in my opinion. And I'm actually going to change that color to a nice, oh, let's see here. I'm going to go, I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to use a nice bright green color, just like so. So once I've done that, drag that up as far as you want it. And then once we're done with our gradient or ramp, whatever you want to call it, we're done with that part of it. Next, I want want to go ahead and create a text layer. So go ahead and right click, or if you don't want to right click, you can go down to or up to layer, new text, just like that. And that will do the same thing. Now, again, you may want to use a completely different font than I do. And if that is the case, no harp done here. So whatever you want to do, you can use that specific font. So I'm going to use this one here and I'm going to change the font color to black. And then once I have done that, I may even go up here and adjust the width and height of it. Now, in order to get something exactly centered in Adobe After Effects, I'm going to show you a little trick. Go down to right here where you see grid and guide options. Click on that and go to title slash action safe. This will bring up these nice little awesome grid lines for you to drag and that way you can look at and see if your text is centered. And then once you're done, go back and click on that one more time and those will be removed. Now that we have our text inserted, we got our background layer. The next step is to add some awesome particle effects. So go to a new and then we're going to create a solid layer and we're going to title this layer particles just like so leave it the same width and height and click OK just like so and then once we have done that we want to go ahead and drag that down there we want to go ahead and adjust some of those particles so what we want to do now is click on that particles layer go back over to our effects and presets panel and then search for particles just like so you're going to see a few different options click on the one that says CC particle world just like that now if you play it now just as it is you're going to see some things that look very similar to electric shocks or some sparks coming up or a sparkler. That is not the final uh, product here, so don't worry about that. We're going to mess with those and make them look how we want them to look. So in order to do that, we're going to select that particles layer. If you hit the down arrow here, you're going to see a plethora of options. But if you go up here under the effects control panel, we can actually see it a little better. So the first thing you want to look at is our birth rate and our longevity. So go down and click on the longevity down arrow and you can make this whatever you want. I'm going to change it uh, to about, let's say 22 just like that. And then, you know, that just makes it 
uh, space out a little better, and then go to the producer drop down menu and change the radius of the X and Y and Z radius uh, on the bottom here to about four. I like four. Again, you can do whatever you want to do. And then once we do that, that's going to have it spaced out across the whole canvas. Now what we want to do is go down to the particle options here, and this is going to allow you to adjust your particles. Now, the particle effect or type that I like, if you go to particle and then particle type, you can choose shaded or faded sphere. I'm going to choose faded sphere. Say that five times fast. Sorry, guys. And then once you do that, you can actually select a color. So I'm going to go ahead and select a nice deep red color for mine because of the color scheme that I'm going with. And then once I've done that, you can actually see those little bitty particles falling there in the background. Uh, so once we've done that, you can look at it there and change that. Go to the physics option right there above particle. And then what we want to do is change a few different things. So change the gravity. Take it all the way down to almost zero. This is going to have that nice slow burn, slow particle fall effect. So if we go ahead and change it to about that there, it's going to actually have them falling at a fairly slow rate. So I'm going to actually increase that just slightly. Uh, right there uh, is nice. So we're going to leave it right at 0 0.090. Change the velocity if you want to, uh, and that's going to change how quickly they fall, uh, if that's what you want to do. And you can even change the animation to be something different. But for this tutorial and this intro, I have found that explosive is indeed the one that you want to choose. Now, the birth rate up here, you can change that you know, to, to be whatever you want. That's basically going to increase the number of particles that you see on the screen. Um, so I'm going to change mine to around maybe 2.9 right at 3 uh, and, and leave it there and see kind of how it goes. So let's go ahead and play that back and see how it looks there. So that looks, that looks nice. We're seeing some particles uh, come falling there. Uh, so, oh, change it to 0. We're going to change it to around 3. There we go. Now we're getting them coming to fall in. We'll leave it right at 3.3, maybe a little more. And they're going to fade in uh, so again, remember that if you don't see them at the very beginning there. All right, so once we've done that, you can play around with all of those settings, play with the different animation types, the different particle types, do all of that. You know, you can play with that. I'm, I'm trying to make this video as short but as educational as possible. So once we have done that, we need to do a few things before we get into the animation side of it. We need to take our tech guru, well, in my case, tech guru, and yours, whatever the text layer is, and make it a 3D layer. So right here where you see that little cube there, go ahead and check that cube right by the text layer. Now, once we've done that, we're good to go for that. Now we want to create a new camera layer. So go up to layer, just like so, new, and then go to camera leave the camera at 50 millimeters just like that name it if you so want to and then click ok now don't do anything just yet we want to create one more layer go up to layer new and then go to null object i'm going to tell you about that just in one second now once we've done that we're going to go ahead and make the null object a 3d layer just like so now what we want to do is click this little parent or squiggly line here on the camera layer, drag it, click and hold, and drag it up to the null one object, just like so. Over here under parent, you should see null one under the camera layer or beside it there. And then once we've done that, it's going to allow us to take that null object and move it around and really add some nice camera effects to the text and particles for that matter. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it back to where it was there in the center for right now. All right, now, once we have done that, go ahead and drag your little timeline indicator there back to the beginning of the timeline, just like I did there. Uh, so once we've done that, let's go ahead and leave that there. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and drag this over just a little bit, okay? Once we have done that, now what we wanna do is add some motion. So let's go ahead and first and foremost, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do uh, add a, this, make this text kind of float in. So let's go ahead and select our text just like so and drag it off the screen. So this is very simple keyframing, not that difficult. Once we have dragged that text layer off the screen, we're gonna go ahead and go here and go to position. So if you just select that layer and then hit P, it's gonna bring up position. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click that little stopwatch right there to create a keyframe. Now what we're going to do is without moving the timeline guy here, we're going to drag this back over, okay? We're going to drag it back over. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to drag this to about maybe three seconds and then drag this over. And as you notice, it creates a keyframe for us. So now when we drag it, that text is going to go from there 
into the canvas area there in the center where we wanted it to go. So that's just some basic keyframing there. Now once we have it in here, we're actually gonna go ahead and rotate that. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on our timeline so I can see each and every second so I can get it exact. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select our null object just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is create some keyframes here with the camera. So right when my text comes in, right after that keyframe, I'm actually gonna go ahead and select rotation. So instead of P under the null one, I'm going to hit the R key. That brings up our rotation and it's going to be the Y axis rotation here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to type in 360 and that's gonna be you know a full 360. So what I wanna do first off though, I wanna go ahead and hit the keyframe on that axis right here. So that creates a keyframe and then I'm gonna go to right at seven seconds or right before and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it 360 degrees one time, just like that. Now when I do that, as you see, right when it comes in, it's gonna start rotating and boom, right there at that keyframe, it is done, right at seven seconds. And I know because the audio that I'm using, seven seconds is where I want to go. So go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. So now if we play it back, we're gonna see that come in just like so. We may want that to come in a little quicker, obviously, that is uh, quite slow. And then it zooms around 360 wise, just like that. And if you want to adjust, you can always click on those keyframes and drag them to make the text come in faster. So now we got it coming in a little faster. We can even do it faster than that. So let's drag it on here, do that there. Boom, text comes in. And then if we want to, we can actually go up here and adjust some stuff up there. So once we do that, we got the nice text coming in. So now the last step of this process is to actually add audio. So in order to do that, just click on the project tab there, go up to file, go to import, go to file, and I already have some music or audio sound effects. Click on that, open it up. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it down here below my final layer and put it where I want it there on the timeline. Now, a quick tip for you. If you cannot hear your audio in the preview, you've got to click on this little guy up here, Ram Preview button. That's gonna allow you to hear the audio. So now if I click that, you're going to see it load. And after it has loaded and it has already done the preview, we can then click the play button like so. And you can see the nice finished product with sound, animation, motion, and everything else. Again, this is not the most extensive of intros. It's not one of those high dollar intros, but it is very basic. It is very beginner, and anybody can do it if they follow these steps. Hopefully, this has helped you out. I really enjoyed doing this video tutorial. Please help me out clicking the thumbs up button, like this video, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to my channel where I create awesome tech, gaming, fun news content every week of the year, and I will see you guys in the next one.